You are developing a system or device in the IoT, medical or railway environment and you are looking for a way to easily test it in an environment which is as close as possible to reality. The Canoe connectivity feature set is the solution. Hello, my name is Jochen and I work as a product manager for the connectivity feature set. Maybe you have already seen my other video in which I gave you a short overview at a glance. If not, you find the link in the description. Now in this video, I would like to show you how it's really done. So let's start. First of all, we have to create our system environment for the device under test. You can do this completely without the protocol details, which are introduced as attributes into the so-called VCDL file. VCDL is a vector-specific interface description language. It supports all you need to describe typical communication modes for IoT protocols. With MQTT, for example, we have just data items which consume or provide values, depending whether we deal with actuators or sensors. So the members of the respecting interfaces represent the MQTT topics. Whereas for HTTP, we need to use methods to model the system behavior. The HTTP server, which we want to communicate with, is specified as attributes at the interface and the member attributes specify the HTTP method and its parameters. Once we're finished with the design step, we can move on and import the file into Canoe. Therefore, we navigate to the communication setup and load the file as data source. The file is checked for syntactical correctness and Canoe also creates objects as declared in the VCDL. We call these objects distributed objects, or short DOs. If you are already familiar with the concept of system variables, the DOs could be seen as enhanced system variables for a start. This means they can be used in every analysis window, test design or implementation of application models. Talking of application models, the main use case of Canoe is always to provide a fully functional simulation environment for the device, function or system under test, in order to perform automated tests. In an early stage, this simulation can include the function itself as well as the environment. In this example, all the red boxes are simulated by Canoe, since I'm showing a standard demo in this video. However, please keep in mind that any of these simulated parts could easily be replaced by the real subsystem. For example, if you develop a shader control, you may need an environment that provides your function with useful values. What you can do is to isolate your function and connect it to the simulation of the remaining system. The same is true if you develop, for example, the main control of our little example here. All the other functional blocks can be implemented as so-called application models. This applies to all other functional subsystems. I think you get the point. Now, how do you develop your application models? Well, in Canoe, there are several options to implement this behavior. For example, you can use the built-in programming language Couple, C Sharp or Python. On top, you can also add a Simulink model into the simulation and directly connect the inputs and outputs to the OS. Now we opened implementation for the main control simulation, which is C Sharp. All functions we see here are based on the DOs, on the application layer. There are no protocols here which you have to take into account. And as I mentioned before, you can also visualize the values of distributed objects in Canoe's analysis windows like window graphic or window data. The start handler is automatically called by Canoe on measurement start. Here you can do your initialization, which means setting the DOs to a defined value. You react on value changes of the DOs within an onUpdate handler. Your editor, in this case Visual Studio Code, will also provide context-sensitive autocompletion or syntax highlighting for easier coding. As we have now all in place, we can continue to create some tests, which can be executed automatically and reproducibly, including test reports for your results. To do this, we have our tool VTest Studio in place, which is an authoring environment for all kinds of tests, such as sequences of predefined test directives, test steps implemented in programming languages, or even designed graphically. I will not focus too much on the tool itself because 
this would of course be worth several separate videos. Here in this C-sharp implementation we see a couple of test functions. Let's have a look at this one here. It's a function to set the light and it takes the desired state as an input. This parameter is of type light simulation control button state light, which was originally defined in our VCDL file, which I'm showing here on the right hand side. By annotating these test functions as export, these functions are now globally available and we can use them, for example, in a test table, which is a sequence of predefined test directives. Here we see the different test steps of this test case and here you can also set and check the values of the DOs. And also here you don't have to deal with protocol specifics. Once we compile this test unit and attach it to Canoe's test setup, we see that it reflects all test cases and test steps. Now we can start the simulation and execute the tests. At the end, we get a well-formatted test report, which gives us feedback about the result of all the test cases, whether passed or failed. So although we digged a little bit deeper into the possibilities of Canoe, we're still only scratching the surface. But I hope I could kickstart some interest with this little video. We would be very happy if you would get in touch with us because we are also very interested in your use cases and to find out how we can help you. Thank you very much. So there's still a little bit of housekeeping to do. Talking about scratching the surface, see for yourself what else can be tested and simulated with Canoe. Check out our Canoe playlist. Check my emails now.